فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم narrated by Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when the month of Ramadan starts the gates of the, the gates of heaven are opened and the gates of hell are closed and the devils are chained and in an and in a wording of Muslim the gates of mercy are opened عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل شهر رمضان فتحت أبواب الجنة وغلقت أبواب النار وصف وصفدت الش وصفدت الشياطين وفي رواية لمسلم فتحت أبواب الرحمة. This hadith it talks about Ramadan, some distinct characteristics of Ramadan, unique things that the Ramadan has. What is it, my brothers and sisters? Ramadan, what does it have? When you fast, what happens to you? We said that fasting causes the veins to tighten. Did we say that? We did. So the circulation becomes slower. And we said that shaitan, as the Prophet said, that the shaitan runs in the human where the shaitan runs in the human where the blood flows. So the shaitan lives inside your veins. صح? Are you with me, brothers? So you got, you're, 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 those shayateen are gone. So if they've gone from you, where do they live? Where do they reside? Sufi that is shayateen. They're chained. But there are particular shayateen that are chained. Not every one of them. The narrations that are coming are going to mention it for us, which is Maradatu Shayateen, the leaders, the big chiefs, big boys. They're the ones who are chained. The, the little ones, yeah? The little ones. They're running around doing their thing. Sah? So, you know, there's a big drug dealer and there's those little Somali kids that run around, sell the drugs for him. Sah? So, they make 20, 30 pounds on the streets and they kill each other on it. There's a big guy at the top like him. He's making the real money. Sah? So, that's a reality, isn't that the case? Marada to shayatin. Marada is the top leader shaytan. He gets chained. Ramadan comes in, he's ready. He gets chained. He's locked down. Brothers, Allah Rabbul Alameen has made everything easy for you. And you still find people who are what? Who are not benefiting from that month. But even if you do look, brothers, even if you do look, Barakallah Fiqh, Jazakallah Khairan. Even if you do look, what do you find? Alhamdulillah, Ramadan has that spirit. True or false? Still, Alhamdulillah. The masjid is, mashallah. Maybe not five times a day, it's not full. But even it's better than a normal day. Sah? Is it not? It's better than a normal day. And mashallah, taraweeh, walillah, alhamdulillah, minna. Alhamdulillah, ma zala al-khayru fil ummah. The khayr is still present in that. And may Allah increase the khayr in us. May Allah increase. That is an evidence to show you that shaitan is gone. Everybody's there. I mean, of course, it's the first two, three nights. It's the worst figures. Have you realized? The walls start sweating because of so much people. So, and then a couple of weeks later, people start, yeah, well, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. So, inshallah ta'ala, um, that the doors of Jannah are open. Doors of Jannah are open for you. And it's a way for you to enter Jannah. It's an opportunity, brothers. Opportunity. These are nafahat. You know what nafahat means? Openings. It means there's opportunity for you to, whatever you had, any issues you had, this is the time to rectify yourself. This is the time to come back. This is the time to change and spin your life. Opportunity of a lifetime. There were two brothers, the Prophet ﷺ told us, two men. One lived after the other one. One lived? One lived after the other one. And the Prophet told us that the one who lived after was better than the one who died first. And when he was asked, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, did he not live an extra year of Ramadan? Did he not live an extra prayer than the other one? Huh? The, one the people who died last Ramadan are not going to be as good as the ones who lived this Ramadan. And the ones who live the next Ramadan are better. Every Ramadan that you get is an opportunity that you're better than the previous Ramadan. The people who died. Huh? So we ask Allah wa ta'ala to give us a life, long life, but beneficial, that we benefit from.
So they're chained, and Allah wa Taala is the one who chains. So brothers, sari'u ila maghfirati min rabbikum. Hasten to the forgiveness of your Lord. There's many shortcomings that are on our side. There's many faults that we have come with, and there's many forgiveness that we need. And we also, brothers, want to enter Jannah. Brothers, do you all, do you all want to enter Jannah? Huh? If you do want to enter Jannah, there is a way to enter Jannah. Don't just want it. Don't be just a person wishful thinking. Make it sure that you live by wanting it. Set yourself goals and what you're going to do in Ramadan. Abi Huraira Rabbi Allah who narrated An Abi Huraira Rabbi Allah who he reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said he who observes the option of reading the English. Sorry, sorry. Abu Huraira Rabbi Allah who reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said he who observes the optional prayer, the taraweeh prayer, throughout Ramadan, out of sincerity of faith and in the hope of earning reward, will have his past sins pardoned. An Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, Samiatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yaqul, Man qama Ramadan imanu wa ahtisaban, Ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbihi, Mutafafun alayhi. This hadith Abu Huraira, the Prophet Sallallahu he says, Man qama Ramadan, anyone who stands in Ramadan. Qiyamul Layl, Taraweeh, praise. But he does it with two things, Imanan wa Ahtisab. What does Imanan mean? A Musaddiqan, he believes it. Believes what, brothers? Bi wa'adillah, Allah's promise. And the second thing is, he believes in Allah's promise. He believes the virtue that is in the Qiyamul Layl. And the second thing is what? وَاحْتِسَابًا He hopes and he's expecting reward from Allah. Those are the two conditions stipulated to you. Imanan. When you're praying, you're not like everybody's doing it, so I need to do it. Oh yeah, my boys are in this mystery, they're praying here, so I'm going to pray here. That's not what it is for you. You actually believe that this qiyam has reward stipulated condition to it. There's that iman in your heart. Wa'd. You believe in Allah's promise. Second thing is that ihtisaban. You are expecting and hoping reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, my beloved brothers and sisters, if you do, you gain something, which is what? Your sins that you have previously done will be forgiven for you. Your previous sins will be given for you. So my beloved brothers and sisters, strive to pray Qiyamul Layl, Taraweeh, huh? Salatul Taraweeh. Brothers, don't give up. Don't be short on it. And also, my beloved brothers and sisters, don't leave it before the Imam. In other words, what I mean by that is, don't, if you start Taraweeh, finish it, brothers. Don't leave it. Are you there, brothers? Some people misunderstood the hadith that the Prophet said, said, Man qama ma'al imam hatta yansarif. Anyone who stands up with the Imam until the Imam leaves, kutiba lahu qiyamu layla. It is written for him as though he's prayed the whole night. They believe that since the salah is mathal, for example, it's 11 rak'ah, for example, if it is. And they believe the first four is led by... Sah? First four is read by one imam. He believes that he started and he finished with that imam. Now I can go. And he says, the hadith says that if you start with the imam and you finish with the imam, the scholars, they say that the imam that's been used here, which is man qama ma'al imam, anyone who finish, starts with the imam and finishes with the imam, it means not the imam, the salah. It means the salah, not the imam. So you actually pray the whole prayer from the beginning to the end. But in there's a time, subhanAllah, look at the jahl. Jahl. Allahumma faqihanna fi deen wa alimna ta'weeli rabbal alameen. Oh Allah, give us understanding of the religion and give us understanding too of the Quran and the Sunnah. There was a time we used to hold the opinion of Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani, 11 rak'ah is Sunnah and any other, any other rak'ah is what? Bid'ah. Sheikh Albani used to believe it's 11. More than 11 is what? Bid'ah. And I remember when I first read it was around 2003. 
I read a book written by him which is called Salatul Tarawih. Or oh, three, 2004. 2004. That year I went to the Kaaba, I prayed Salatul Tarawih with the Imam, and a brother came up to me and he said to me, Akhi, you're going to pray the whole Salah? I said, yes, inshallah, why not? Man qaba ma'al Imam. Hatta yansarif. Kutiba lahu qiyamu layl. I said, of course. He gave me a book written by Shaykh al-Bani. He said, look, Akhi, just read this book, inshallah ta'ala. Look at it and see, inshallah ta'ala, what you get from it. So I'll open the book and read it. Knowing who Sheikh Al Bani is, Rahimahullah, Rahmatan Wasi, the great noble Imam. And anyone who knows Sheikh Al Bani, Rahimahullah, anyone who's read Sheikh Al Bani's works, anyone who's read these works, who's munsif, who's fair, would admit that Sheikh Al Bani can convince you. He can what? Sheikh Nasir can convince you. Ibn Uthaymin said about him, Qareeb al He's He convinces very close. It's not very hard, he said about him. The way he brings the riwayat and the sanid and he brings the turuq for it and he word for word he explains it to you. Anyways, he made me convince me, Sheikh Nasir, that anything more than 11 is bid'ah. And so what I used to do was I used to pay the haram. And where, where are my brothers? Fi baytillahi. I'm in the Kaaba. I pray 11. When I finish my 11 rak'ah, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, I'd leave. And I would be very tough with those who pray more than 11. Say, Akhi taqilla, Akhi taqilla, why are you doing bid'ah for? Why are you? Why are you doing bid'ah for? He says, bid'ah, you bid'ah to Allah. That's what I used to say to them. I mean, of course, I never said they're mubtidi or anything, I didn't say that. But I just said, this is a bid'ah, why are you doing it for? The Sheikh has an ijtihad. Has a strong, this is his personal opinion. Like, la shaka wa la raib, it's not a bid'ah. It's not a? It's not a bid'ah. Taraweeh has no limits. Hundreds of if you miss pray, they pray with them. Mi'ah, if they pray, pray with them. And restricting it to an amount is incorrect because taraweeh is from the nawafil which are mutlaqa. The nawafil are two types. Nawafil which are muqayyada, like the rawatib that we pray before Fajr. After, these are rawat muqayyada, these are restricted. See, this is the problem when it comes. But the nawafil which are mutlaqa, they have no restrictions. Tarawih is from the nawafil which are mutlaqa. And you know what's, what's a nawafil mutlaqa? When you come to the Fajr, so when you come to the masjid on a Friday, when you come to the masjid on Friday, before the khatib, the khutbah, the imam goes in the pulpit, what can you do? Two rak'ah, those two are unrestricted. You can pray a million if you want. If you've got time, you can do it. This is called nawafil mutlaqa. Are you with me, brothers? These are called nawafil mutlaqa. Unrestricted types of ibadah. So we believe, inshallah ta'ala, that Ramadan, taraweeh is not restricted. But what's good is that the brothers who pray, masajid that pray, more than 11, they should not restrict themselves to any amount. They should change it. That's best. You with me? One time they should make it 23. One time they should make it 11. One time they should make it 13. One time, they, you know, they should change it for the people. Sahab brothers? Are you there, brothers? They should change it for the people. But if your masjid prays 23 or it prays 11 or it prays 13, your reward is from the beginning of the salah until the ending. You can't say the masjid has four or five imams, so when, I, when each one a person leads it, so I prayed with the imam and I left with the imam, that's not the, that's not the point. The point is, hadith mentioning here is, man qama ma'al imami ay ma'as salati. The one who starts with the prayer is written for him, all of it. Another issue that I need to mention, which is, when you pray, pay attention. When you pray tarawih, can you go home and pray again? So you prayed the taraweeh, you went, you prayed witr, you did everything. Can you go home and you pray again? Yeah? Yes, you can. You can. Even after the taraweeh, the witr has been done, yes, you can. Pray the witr with them. Go home. Go home. And pray as much as you wish again. But don't pray witr anymore. You've already, you've already done a witr. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, alayhi salatu wasalam, 
لا وتر في ليل لا وتران في ليلة there's two not there's not two witters in one night some may now argue and say أخي this is an issue now if you pray the witter and the salah finished how can you then pray after it when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says اجعل آخر صلاتكم بالليل وترا make the last prayer that you pray at the night let it be witter you've now what you've basically done was you've actually made the witter was done and then you said to the people you can go home and pray even more if you wish to yeah? and then you said to them, don't do witter how do you reconcile between the two this is referring to a person who actually prayed Salah, the, the, the first who prayed Taraweeh and then just went home. Does that make sense? A person who prayed like Salatul Taraweeh, for instance, and they just went home and they slept and they didn't to the witter. But you, as an individual who's already received a witter, are you there? This hadith is not talking about you. Who wants to do more? You've come with the witter. You're allowed to. Because what reconciles between that is what about the Sunnah before Fajr? If you say that the witter should be the last thing that you do, then what about the sunnah before Fajr? But you just prayed. Because when, when, you, when you pray Fajr, what do you do? When the Adana Fajr goes off, what do you do? You pray Rak'atani. The Prophet said two Rak'a of Fajr. Khayru min dunya wa ma fiha. It's better than this dunya and everything in it. So, haven't, you, haven't you prayed that? Have you not prayed that? You have, and you did it after the witr. So, so what you say to you is that, that this is meant by... Um, this is meant by the explanation I gave. Now, now, for the. Naam. So some scholars they say leave the witr of the Imam, leave him, when pray with him, but the last one witr that he does, the dua and the qunut and everything, just leave that. Go home and then pray your salah, carry on, carry on, carry on, carry on, carry on, and then you do you do your own witr, right? But then you're gonna lose of the dua that I, that I mentioned. Man ma'al imami You haven't prayed with the Imam from beginning to end. So you so you don't make it a witter, you make it a shafa. Yeah. So you add an extra. Nah, that's not even permissible salat, and that's, that needs a delil. If you add an extra, for example, he's doing three, so you go and you make it four, for example. So yeah. we'll say to you that's incorrect. Limada. For two reasons. Number one, is that who did it from the salaf who had the ummah? No one did it. This is a qawl, like it has. It's trying to reconcile between something, but it's introducing unnecessary ruling. That's what that's what it's going to be. The second reason is you have an answer. You have a better way to go about it. That there's a way to reconcile between the two opinions. That you can pray your witr with the imam. Make sure you do everything with him. This hadith is talking about that. Fajal akhir salatikum. Make the last prayer of yours. Witr. It means when you've prayed a long prayer, and you haven't prayed witr. But if you have prayed witr, it's not referring to you. It's not talking to you. Since you've already prayed witr, it's not saying to you, فَجَعَلْ آخِرَ صَلَاتِكُمْ الْوِتْرَ Does that make sense? And I believe that's the قول that reconciles between the two narrations. And it also what? It doesn't introduce another. Because what, what about the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ? He said, where he said جُعِلَ الْإِمَامُ لِيُؤْتَمَّ بِهِ The imam was made to be followed. If you came late... Pay attention. If you came late in a prayer where it's, for example, Maghrib and it's three rak'ah, and you came late and you missed, my, my example, one rak'ah, you can stand up to do the other rak'ah, sahih, because you've missed it and the Imam did it, right? Did he not? But if the Imam has prayed three and you pray four, are you following the Imam? If the Imam prayed three and you made an extra fourth one, when are, are you not going against the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the Imam was being made to follow? So you go against that hadith. You also introduce a new ruling that has no evidence for. Sahih? That, 
no one understood it from the Salaf or the Ummah, from the Sahabas or the Tabi'een, coming and praying, making it into a witter to the Shafa. I looked at Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, for example, Abdul Razak Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba's Musannaf. These are the books that have the A'mal of Sahaba, the actions of the companions. And I haven't seen ala ma arahu, I don't see it. Another issue which is very common, I'm going to speak about more in details, is the issue of people having mushafs in, in the month of Ramadan with the Imam. And the Imam, some of the Imams have it themselves. Is an Imam, he's like, he's got mushaf in front of him. Ya if you're not hafiz, we have little kids who can lead. Don't worry, we'll give it to them. If you can't lead and you don't know the Quran, Akhi, barakallahu, sit at the back. We have enough people who, inshallah ta'ala, are going to lead. Not, we're not at a point where in the jungle you're the only one who knows the Quran. Then that is the darura. We'll give it to you then. But you, we have enough hufad within the. Uh, now, another issue is that people who use the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, where Aisha radiallahu anha said she used to have a slave boy. Are you there, brothers? She used to have a. Now. He would lead the prayer, Sahih? And Aisha would look from the Mus'haf, right? Who would look at the, who would look at the Mus'haf? Huh? Aisha herself. Wallahi, I forgot it. But the hadith is Aisha either permitted it or she did it. This is darura, akhi. The necessity cannot be used. A slave doesn't know the Quran. He didn't memorize the Quran. And it's a necessity. And she can't lead the prayer. Are you with me, brothers? But we have imams. We have a'imma. We have huffaf. We have, alhamdulillah, we're content. We have huffaf. Even if we don't have a half of the whole Quran, that particular portion, that day for the taraweeh, we can find somebody to lead it. Sah? For you to have to take a mushaf, there's no need for it. Sahih. There's no need. But if there becomes, if you're an example in a community or in an area where there's no person who's memorized the Quran and there's a necessity, of course you're permissible. It's permissible, it's permissible for you to take a mushaf then. And for you to lead, because this now overcomes the need for what? Now we're talking about the Imam here, brothers. Are you there? Sorry, the story was that Aisha, the slave boy, would read the Quran from the mushaf. She would allow him to read, lead her prayer whilst he was reading from those half. That's what it was. Now we're talking about the Imam, brother who's in the middle of the Salah and the Salah. Why are you reading from Mus'haf? Who needs you to read from Mus'haf? He's got big, he's got small little Mus'haf. Right, he's in the middle of the Salah. He's, he's, does that make sense? And whilst you're praying, you can hear, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. he's turning over pages like this, checking which page, and he's getting. And sometimes what they do is they change over, pay attention, they change a couple of pages just to check how many maqalas he's got left. Is, what juice is he gonna, is that salah? Even worse, look how the issue becomes uh, un unstoppable. Look how it becomes unstoppable. He, what he says is, now the, the mushaf's the Quran. Sorry, the mushaf's in the mobile. Ayye, yeah. al mustajaddat. He was just gonna read it now, yeah. I saw a guy in the middle of salah carrying a mobile doing this. He's got a mobile phone. Billahi alaykum, what are you going to tell him? Is he, sah? If he gets a text message, if he gets a call, if he gets something, sah? But this is my feeling. For you then to say, this is not allowed, this one's allowed, then you, you, you open a niqash that's unnecessary, sahih? If there's a necessity, and there's a need, there's a permissibility for it. Sahih? But the asal is man'a. Don't allow it. Oh, the, the people who run the masajid should give it to the hufad and let them lead.